Behind me is the Vatican, the smallest country in the world. Now that I've crossed the border, I'm going to be surviving here for 24 hours. And I'm going to be surviving completely alone with only 10 euros. Would it be possible for someone to survive in Vatican City overnight? No, it's not possible. Challenge accepted. Sitting in the middle of Rome, the Vatican has a population of only 807 people. It's the same size as the Mall of America and four times smaller than the Fortnite map, with most parts restricted to residents only. It's run by the Pope with no hotels and its own military service keeping tourists out overnight. It has the highest crime rate and is technically the most powerful state in the world. I've been given a list of challenges to complete before I'm allowed to leave the country. But before you go, Morgan, we've got one more challenge for you. Since you're in the world's smallest country, we thought you should use the world's smallest phone. And just like that, I've officially entered my home for the next 24 hours. So guys, to say that I'm going to be here for the next 24 hours, apart from it being the world's smallest country, I actually know nothing about this place. So I think this might be a good time to actually try and complete the first challenge. If I do a lap all the way around the world's smallest country, it should help me find out more about this place and how to survive here for 24 hours. I'm going to start right here at the entrance. And just like that, I set off on my journey to walk a lap of the world's smallest country. And of course, I was taking this very seriously. I've only been in the country for 10 minutes and I've already seen five police cars and even a military car. Is this still Vatican City? Through here? This is uh, the, the line. The line? I almost crossed the line. I'm not sure those armed military guys really gave a sh but I almost just stepped over the line and lost the challenge right there. I checked my new phone for Google Maps, but unsurprisingly, it didn't have it. So I had to be extra careful whilst walking to not almost leave the country again. However, this is where I stumbled across my first major problem. This part of the country is for tourists, meaning anybody can enter with no problem. But those houses up there behind the wall are a completely different part of the country for residents only. So that means to complete the lap of the country, I have to somehow bypass not just security, but Vatican's own military guards. Hi, visiting up there? Uh, please don't kill me here. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I think it's off. Is this the residence entrance? You can't enter Vatican. Stop the GoPro if you want. Oh, sorry. Is it, is, oh, is it on? Well, as expected, that was a complete disaster. And to make things worse, now all the security are on to me. That's when I overheard a group of tourists talking about a bus tour around the residential area of Vatican. I'm running to get to this tour. If I could get on that bus, I could complete the lap. Step number one, get past security. Oh, that was kind of easy. If anybody's missed the bus, in 10 minutes you'll be able to get me on. Thank you. I just sweet talked the lady at the desk and she basically said if anybody doesn't show up to the next bus ride, she'll let me on for free. I waited anxiously. Then she called me over. She printed off a ticket and handed it to me. All I had to do now was follow the group, go through the turnstile and board the bus. You know what they say guys, cool kids at the back of the bus. We're literally driving around the outside walls of the country. This is perfect. Despite its size, the Vatican is considered the 18th richest country on the planet. And checking out the amazing buildings and artifacts, I can tell why. I even passed their railway, which is the shortest in the world at only 200 meters long. I was enjoying the views, but I was far from comfortable. And whilst I was close to passing out on the hottest bus of all time, the girls had just arrived at the best spot in Rome. Oh my god. Oh my god, Ella. I think we're in heaven. <laughs> we've got a sauna. We've got a steam room. <laughs> That's hot. And we've got a massive swimming pool. And the best part is, it's all to ourselves. No, Ella. The best bit is free Prosecco. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh well. Down in one. The bus may have been hot, however, it was all worth it because. Oh, oh my god. Yes, I finally completed the lap. That was honestly so 
tiring. Now that I've completed that challenge, I'm fully going into survival mode. I need to find some water or else I genuinely think I'm gonna faint. While doing the lap of the country, I noticed a shop, so I headed back over to it. There is a shop selling ice cream and drinks literally right there. But how am I supposed to get to it when the line of the country is right here? This is literally the definition of so close, yet so far. Just when I was starting to lose hope, a fan approached and it gave me an idea. I'm filming a video, right? Spending 24 hours inside Vatican, but I need a drink of water from that place there. Would you be able to get me one if I give you the money? Yeah. Yes. Are you sure? Yeah. I've just realized these guys could literally walk off with my only 10 euro and I wouldn't even be able to come after them and chase them. Yo. Here's eight. Oh my God, thank you, bro. Yeah. Shout out to these guys for Did getting me my water. Yeah. Now that I had water, the next thing I needed was food. I found some leftover donuts and even some lettuce, but the pigeons did not want to share. Then once again, another fan came over. Guys, can I ask you a favor? Do you know if any of these shops sell any food? Yeah. yeah. If I give you the money, would you be able to get it for me? I can't leave. Yeah. yeah. Is that okay? Of course we Thank you so much. Mars Bar, amazing. Thank you so much. Oh, you got me too. Oh, thank you so much. So to last me 24 hours, I had one bottle of water and two chocolate bars. Considering this is 70% of our budget gone already, it's not exactly a gourmet meal, but it's definitely better than nothing. That's when, on the world's smallest phone, I got a call from Mum. Hey Morgan, me and Ella are about to tuck into a 1.3 kg Prussian super steak. Care to join us? There ain't many things I'd like more than a big juicy steak right now, but I ain't quitting this challenge. Now that I've had some food and water, it's time to complete the next challenge. Bypass the security and film the famous Creation of Adam painting inside the Sistine Chapel. I walked into the museum through the exit and while his back was turned, walked past the security guard. But that wasn't all. I had to get through the security scanners. I mixed in with a tour group to look less suspicious and it actually worked. So guys, the tour that I just snuck into has got me into here, the Vatican Museum. But this is not where we want to be. We need to get into the Sistine Chapel, which is home to the famous creation of Adam painting. The Sistine Chapel and the Vatican Museum are connected though, so being in here will definitely get me one step closer to completing that challenge. The Sistine Chapel is filled with security, making sure you don't film the painting. No photo, sir. So you might be wondering, how am I gonna do it? Lucky for me, I came prepared. These may look like regular glasses, but they're actually spy glasses with a built-in camera. So I'll be able to film the painting just by looking at it. It's genius! Which way to the Sistine Chapel? Up there, thank you very much. I walked further and further through the museum, following the signs to the Sistine Chapel. This is a good sign, guys. I've just passed a poster saying no flash. We're definitely getting closer. The museum just kept going and going. I felt like I was trapped in a maze. Finally, I found the Sistine Chapel and wearing only my spy glasses, I entered. It was breathtaking. Oh my God, this is sick. But there was a slight issue. I couldn't find the painting. Where's the creation of Adam painting? Is it in here? Is it on the roof? I couldn't find it. There it was, the creation of Adam painting in all of its glory. Excuse me, am I allowed to take a video? Little did he know, it was too late. I already filmed it and completed another challenge. Guys, I've just noticed some of the security starting to look at me. If they know that I filmed, they're gonna take me to jail. I need to go. It literally just carries on forever. I finally found the end, but before I left, I had to check out the gift shop. I have three euro. What can I get? Yeah, pencil. Oh, get a pencil. A magnet. magnet. Do I spend every bit of money I've got left on a pencil, or do I move on? I think this is actually quite an easy decision, guys. Three euro, please. <laughs> Thank you very much. Of course, I went for the pencil. I sat down, and the reality started to set in. I'd literally just spent my last bit of money on a pencil. 
But you know what they say. One man's ass is another man's treasure. I think it might be trash, not ass. If Ryan Trahan can trade a penny to a house, then I can trade my pencil for something useful. Do you have anything you'd like to trade for this pencil? Oh, that wasn't even a no, that was just a leave me the f alone. Do you have anything you'd like to trade for this pencil? Sorry, I have nothing. You have nothing? Oh, okay, no worries. I don't like your pencil. He doesn't like my pencil. This cost me three euro. I'm gonna stop asking people if they wanna buy the pencil and I'm gonna sell them this pencil. People call me the clickbait king. I'm just gonna have to use it to my advantage in real life. Would you like to trade anything for this 1,000 euro pencil? How this much? 1,000 euro, would you like to trade anything? 1,000. 1,000. Yeah. Give me three. Three okay. pence, I only have one, I only have one no, pencil. I three, 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 no buy. Oh. Half price? No, I... 500 euros. You three, I give you 3,000 euros. I'm sorry. It was clear. Nobody believed my lies and nobody wanted my pencil. I was just about to give up, but I tried one more time. I've got this one-of-a-kind pencil from inside the Vatican. Yeah. Would you want to trade for anything at your store? I couldn't believe it. He took my pencil and handed me a gift of his own. Take that, take it. Oh my God, he took my pencil and gave me this. And there it was, the Pope of the Vatican. With the Pope on my side, it was time to take on the next challenge. Reach the tallest point of the country. 600 steps above ground in the dome of St. Peter's Basilica. I've spotted another tour group. I'm gonna try and join it. After joining the tour group, the first thing I noticed, oh my God, is that Bald Martin? In Rome, you will have a new temple for a new gold. He's even got the accent. We're approaching security now. This is the big moment. Will I get through? As you can see from the smile on my face, I successfully made it through. However, this security guy saw me filming and made me delete the footage off my GoPro. The tour guide also saw him telling me off, so I thought my cover was blown right there, but it looks like I'm okay. We entered St. Peter's Basilica, but one of the guards followed us in and was clearly keeping an eye on me. Inside the building, there was loads of security and I kept noticing them looking at me. This place is amazing, but how the hell am I supposed to get? all the way up there. As for Bald Martin, he just kept rambling on. That's the challenge to become the tomb of this French cardinal. And on. The paradise, thanks to a tree. The tree of the cross. And on. We are 15 meters far away. Should I leave the tour group and try and make my own way up to the roof? Or do I stick with the tour group and hope the security don't catch me? Time was running out and I had to make a decision. I decided to say goodbye to Bald Martin and sneak off on my own. Guys, there is an elevator here, completely unguarded. You know what guys, if you don't shoot, you don't score. I think I'm just gonna wait for low security, hop this barrier and try and get in that elevator. Oh no, it doesn't work. Our uh, other side. Everybody I spoke to kept pointing me towards the ticket desk, where it was an extra 10 euro to get to the dome. So I decided to do again what I did earlier, walk up to the desk and try and waffle my way through. I, I came here with a tour group, but I've lost them. And asked if he'd let me through to go and meet them. And to my own surprise, he actually did. I could not believe it. He was walking me to the stairs. I thought I was in the clear until the final boss of security guards came over and he wasn't having any of it but after speaking to the guy in the suit he let me pass i felt like it was job done just getting past the security but i soon remembered that i had 600 steps to walk up before the challenge was completed my legs ache already not even that far up guys Feels like I've been going for ages. I kept walking up more and more steps until I finally made the top. I think I made it, oh my God. So guys, I thought I'd reached the tallest point of the country, but it turns out this is only the halfway mark and the real tallest point is all the way up there. I had a wee in the world's weirdest toilet, had a look in the shop at all the drinks I couldn't afford and then set off walking once again. I'm officially starting the second part 
of the climb. I walked up straight stairs, spiral stairs, slopey stairs. I can barely even fit in here, this is crazy. Dripping in sweat, I made it to the final staircase. The next staircase has a rope. <laughs> What is that even for? And then finally arrived at the top of the dome. I gazed over at the beauty of the Vatican. That is another challenge completed. Reach the tallest point in the world's smallest country. Now I've got to do it all again to get back down. Okay, so I have finally made it down from all the way up there at the tallest point of the country. And now the sun is starting to set over the world's smallest country. Apart from my girlfriend without any clothes on, this is probably one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. But now that the sun is starting to set, this just got a whole lot more real. And now I've got to try and think about how I'm gonna survive here overnight. Hi, do you know if there's any hotels open tonight inside the Vatican? Inside the Vatican. Inside Vatican. But inside the Vatican is only the church. Oh. <laughs> do you know if there's anywhere for me to stay? Any hotels? No, no, no. no no, oh, okay. Not inside. Okay. Yeah, I, I, wouldn't have no I wouldn't think Have you seen any? No. 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 Everybody's saying the same thing. No, there is nowhere to stay. And while I was struggling to find anywhere to stay the night, the girls had just checked in to a five-star hotel, literally across the road from the world's smallest country. I wonder what Morgan's up to right now. So guys, it's clear that I am not going to be staying in a hotel tonight. Now the problem of the streets of the Vatican is that there is police everywhere. And as well as that, you've got the security guards and the military. While researching this challenge, I found a late night tour of the tombs of the Vatican. So if I can get into those tombs, maybe there's a hiding spot for me to stay in overnight. How am I going to get into the tour of the tombs? I suppose I'm going to have to do what I do best. Get there and try and wing it. And that's exactly what I did. I used my ticket from earlier to sneak back in and ventured down into the tomb. The tombs of the Vatican are actually one of the most controversial parts of the country. Back in 1983, a Vatican girl disappeared and she is still missing to this day. Two of the Vatican tombs were opened, but they were both empty. There was even a Netflix documentary made all about the mystery. They have looked for the secrets of the tomb of one lost uh, girl, um, secrets of the tomb. Maybe they are, but they are hiding in the history. Filming was of course not allowed inside the tomb. So once again, I put on my spy glasses. I could maybe jump this fence and hide around there. If I hid around there, do you think I'd get arrested? Oh God, guys, what about this locked again? Everything's locked. This corridor looks like it goes down for a long time. Could I maybe jump over and explore? It's really risky, but... I don't know if I've got another choice. That's when I turned around and noticed a security guard on the phone. Another security guard staring at me and a camera on the ceiling watching everything. I don't really want to go to jail and there's security everywhere. I'm going to dip. Oh. oh my God, guys, the water is f***ing green. Oh. Guys, I know it's a bit gross, but I've probably done 10,000 steps today and I needed to shower somehow. The dirty water was about to be the least of my worries because the clocks hit 11 p.m. and the police stormed in. Oh, is it closed? Yeah. Closing right now? There's police cars everywhere. Oh my God, there's literally two over there. Oh my God, they're, they're, they're beeping at me, they're beeping at me. They're beeping at me, they're beeping. I don't know what to do, they're kicking everybody out of the country. If I leave, I lose the challenge, what the f do I do? They're following me out. They're following me out of the country, what the hell do I do? Is this the line or is that white line the line? This is the line. This is the line, okay. As long as both of my feet don't cross this gray line, I am still in the country. When does the Vatican open tomorrow? Seven. Seven a.m.? Seven a.m. Okay, brilliant. The time is 11. 50. That means I have seven hours stood on the border of the country waiting for it to open. 
while surrounded by police. And to make things even worse, whilst I stood legs aching, smelling like fountain water, the girls got dressed up and headed out to party. Do you think Morgan's doing all right? All by himself in the world's smallest country. Yeah, he'll be fine. Let's get another drink. Cheers for the best holiday ever. And no Morgan. Free. 39 in the morning. Police have all moved off into the distance. There is one car patrolling the right side down there, another one banging in the middle in the distance there, and there's another police car down here, and this one has been sat watching me. I promise you guys, I honestly cannot stand up any longer. I figured out that this barrier here is the barrier that the police use to get in and out of the country. So if I can shift this barrier forward, to create enough space for me to lie down here, then I think I'll be able to survive the rest of this night. The problem is, if the police catch me literally moving their country's border, I think I'm going to jail. Okay, I've pushed it forward a little bit. The police car's stopped there with a good view of me. Remember, if I cross this line, the whole thing is over and I lose the challenge. If I can nudge this side just a tiny bit more, then I think we're all good. That was loud. Oh my God. I think that's sleepable. I think that gap is sleepable. You know what guys, to say just a few hours ago that armed police were literally following me out of their country. I'm pretty happy with my sleeping spot. <laughs> as long as when I wake up in exactly four hours and five minutes, my feet and body is still in this line, I will have successfully completed the final challenge. I've put on my spy glasses so that if anything happens in the night while I'm asleep, I'll have it on record. See you guys in the morning. Hopefully, I'm not in jail. I woke up in the morning to a beautiful sunrise and an unhappy voice shouting at me. Oh, I'll tell you. Is Vatican open? Oh, open. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. So tired. Part of me thought I'd be woken up by police. However, I thought I'd be going to jail. I didn't think they'd wake me up. I've now completed all of the challenges. That really wasn't a good night's sleep, though. As people started to enter the Vatican again, I watched over the sunrise, wondering how I'd managed to actually survive the night inside. The time is currently 7 a.m. That means I have only two more hours until I can officially leave this country. 24 hours ago, I entered the world's smallest country. I managed to do a lap, reach the tallest point, explore the tombs, and of course, survive the night. As the clock turned 9 a.m., I finally left. Morgan, you entered at 10 a.m. You've only stayed there for 23 hours. Shh. 